Hey everyone. I think we're overdue for another thrifting adventure, and who doesn't love finding a deal on obsolete tech, right? The Habitat for Humanity Restore is just a few minutes from my home, and I pass right by on my usual walking route. Over the course of several months, I've managed to scrounge up some interesting finds, so let's take a look. Right inside the door is this for real actual bread bin. I don't see any Moss 6510 inside, but wouldn't this make the ultimate Commodore 64 case? Ooh, that's... that's an idea. Over in the back, there's a small automotive section where I found this 10 disc changer. I bet this was 500 bucks or more when it was new back in the day. I don't remember the last time I played an actual CD in the car, do you? The inkjet graveyard just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I don't know why they even accept these, quote, donations. Refills are a scam and these things just become instant e-waste. But what's this? An actual laser jet? Uh, $145? Are you kidding me? In the last Thrifts video, I spied these realistic branded Radio Shack speakers for $5 and came close to taking them home several times over the course of the many months they lingered on the shelf. A handful of commenters thought I should have, so naturally, the very next time I went back with intent to buy, they were nowhere to be found. <laughs> that figures. Right next to the speakers are some bins of random cables and other assorted hoosets. I did end up finding a DB25 to DB9 serial cable, as well as those fancy round IDE cables, new in package, each for only 50 cents. Seems I lost the video footage though. Eh, figures. Now this is a chonker. Look how thick this big boy is. According to the spec sheet, it starts at 7.2 pounds and goes up from there depending on configuration. Alright, fine, it's no SX64, I'll give you that, but still. I almost never find any software at this location. I don't spy anything I want to snatch from my house on this particular road trip, but there are a few PS2 and 3 titles hidden amongst the DVDs. Of course there'd be a Madden game. There's always a freaking Madden game. Oh, and a pile of Wii Fit boards. Those things are always there. It's always worth taking a look in the display case. Ooh, laptop RAM for $2. I don't really need this right now, but it will come in handy someday. Maybe. Okay, probably not. And that, folks, is Hoarding 101. I'm still taking it though. What else? A 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot. No need these days. But this type of portable hotspot was often provided by Airbnbs in Japan when we visited a few years back. Darn useful actually. Brand new mini DV tape for a buck? Not today. But I probably will need one the day after they sell. Kind of like a certain VHS tape from last time. More on that in a sec. Wow, time flies. It's already Christmas again. Or was. And this is new. They've got a bunch of game consoles. Xbox 360, Xbox One, even an OG model, which I've been meaning to make a video about. Prices aren't bad considering they come with controllers and or games. More software titles than I've ever seen in this location before. Naturally, half of them are sports titles, but there are a few decent things here and four bucks isn't too bad. Nothing I need or want though. Anyone care to guess what the retail cost of this was? $50? A hundred? Well, it's five dollars now, and to me that's about what these things are actually worth. Angry comments incoming!
Hmm, a retro-style Bluetooth speaker. I'm not sure exactly who the target audience is for this, but it can be someone's for only $10. And on the other end of the technology and price spectrum, we have this Akai M9 reel-to-reel -reel recorder. I don't see a price anywhere, and if you have to ask, it also seems to be missing the front cover. There's also the Sansui Model 2000 going for what appears to be full eBay price. I think it would take a pretty specific thrift store patron to shell out that kind of cash on an impulse buy. Speaking of patrons, thanks to our channel supporters, patreon.com slash retrobits. At home amongst the vacuum cleaners is this full-size video slot machine with a CRT. Check out that burn-in. In the last thrifts video, I passed on this brand new VHS tape for a dollar. I ended up needing a blank while making the Amiga fan subbing episode, as I had none on hand, so of course it was gone when I came back to look. Figures. Instead, I ended up looking for a used tape I could overwrite. This blockbuster rental should do the trick, and I don't think anyone will bemoan the destruction of one copy of Sergeant Bilko. Feel free to prove me wrong, though. With the holidays now over, the Xbox bundle came way down in price. $50 seems like a reasonable deal to me. All the games are now consolidated into the display case instead of mixed in with the DVDs, which is super convenient. Half are still the same sports titles from before. Gee, I wonder why those are still here. But there's a copy of No Man's Sky and some classic PS2 stuff. $25 for DDR2? That doesn't seem right. On a lower shelf, I found this Samsung flip phone. Ha! Huh, it's still powered on, so it couldn't have been here long. And what's this, a calculator? No, not with 128k bytes. Ah, oh, neat, it's got a full keyboard. Five bucks? Sure, why not? Anyone need a towel dispenser? Or 10? Only three dollars each. Might actually be nice to have one out in the garage or workshop. It looks like they're having a clearance sale. iPod docks and subwoofers marked down to just a dollar. And over here is a selection of 4x3 displays for only 3 bucks. I'm pretty sure I have enough old LCD panels already though. Remember these? I never cared for them, but some people really like the natural keyboard. Guess they still make a modern version of this. In the aisle, there are several new bins of cables, and they're even sorted by type. Looks like a variety of SCSI cables, which is neat, I haven't seen these here before. I should probably pick up a few, you know, in case of an emergency. They're only a dollar each. Anyone need a remote? Only two dollars. Surprise your friends and family with an unsolicited gift. Act now, supplies are limited. This is great, they're now selling complete PCs and have them set up and running so you can take a test drive. I like these recent changes around here. This 2007 iMac might be of interest to someone, but I've seen these complete on eBay for as little as $40, so it's not a great deal. But, at least you know it works, and you don't have to deal with sketchy sellers and shipping damage this way. Even cooler, there's an old custom PC for 10 bucks. Let's see what we've got here. Could it be a 386 or 486? The case and floppy drive alone are probably worth the cost of admission. Hmm, hard to tell with this heatsink. 
But the board has SATA and DDR3 support, so 2007 or later, maybe a Core 2 Duo? Good news, everyone! As I was leaving the store, I discovered that the speakers I was looking for had been moved to the front near the checkout counter. They were still only $5, so they came home with me this time. Well, that wraps it up for the first location. Let's try the other local restore as well. This one has a smaller electronics section, but a lot more media. Prices also tend to run higher here in general. So why not start in the media section? First up, we have this end cap of assorted VHS tapes. Some promotional material, home recordings. Maybe I shouldn't have sacrificed Sergeant Bilko after all. Nah, the world is a better place for it. The electronics section is limited to just a couple of shelves, but there's almost always something good here. This floppy drive doesn't have a price tag, but I'm going to grab it and ask. I need to restock my supply of spares after using one in the recent 1581 build. On this visit, I found some games hiding in with the DVDs. Of course, they'd only be sports titles. Figures. Nope, wait, I was wrong. There are some PC titles here today as well. Ah, but yeah, modern PC games all have an activation code, which has almost certainly been used already, so these are not much use. Figures. Lots of vacuums. Most of these suck, but I thought this one was cool. We had a canister vacuum like this when I was a kid. Electrolux, that's a fun word to say. Electrolux. Electrolux. Here in the warehouse, right above the vacuums for some strange reason, was this new and packaged floppy cable for 50 cents. That'll go nicely with the drive, which was $3 by the way. Last time, I found a tiny personal CRT on this shelf of power tools next to the lawn mowers. I decided if I saw it again, I'd claim it, but someone beat me to it. Figures. HVAC supplies and a random subwoofer, because why not? It's gotta be at least 12 inches. Looks pretty weathered though. Just funny what you find strewn about the place. You really do have to look everywhere. And speaking of strewn about, Here's a shelf full of old phones, desktop speakers, a Wi-Fi router, more remotes, and unsorted wiring. Centronics to parallel cable, anyone? Next to it, more keyboards, toner, and this thing. HP Tax One. Oh, okay, this is a font cartridge for old laser jets. $250 back in 1984. This thing is actually period correct for the channel. What's this? A thing in a box? Ah, an Adaptec combo, Firewire and USB 2.0 card. Video editing software included. Again with the no price tag. Seems to be a recurring theme in this location. Figures. Next to the thing in the box, we have another thing in a box. Still an original shrink wrap too. No price tag, but it can't be much. It seems that I'm starting a small collection of new in-box networking products, so why the heck not? And what do we have here? A vintage power center. I was never one of the cool kids and didn't have one of these back in the day. Those two facts are unrelated, by the way. No price tag either, but it's coming home with me for sure. Lower down on the same shelf, there's a bunch of neat stuff. Check out this Stats HDMI RGB range extender. Claims to extend 1080p up to 100 meters. HDMI comes in and goes out on the front, and then BNC cables are used for the actual transmission. Neat. There's also this three-port PCMCAA Firewire adapter. And this generic GameCube memory card. Some kind of PC video capture device for analog and RF video. 
and another Ethernet card. Okay, I think that's it for this location. Nope, I was wrong. On the way out, I spied these boxed PC games. The Sims Deluxe and Vacation Expansion Pack. Comic Mischief, Mild Violence, and Suggestive Themes. I'll leave these here for someone else. I'm not trying to get into the business of collecting PC games. That ship already sailed years ago. One more thrift find, but this one is digital. I like to check out Goodwill's online auction site from time to time. There's a lot of good stuff, but most of it tends to go for eBay prices. While browsing, I came across an auction for this Sega Genesis with only a few minutes left and no bids. The opening price was only $9 or something, and I felt sorry for this overlooked console, so I tossed in an opening bid plus a few dollars extra to pad against snipers. A few minutes later, the system was mined for 15 plus shipping and handling. I thought I had scored quite a deal, until I checked eBay and realized that's pretty average for a bare untested unit. They seem to be among the cheapest vintage consoles you can buy these days, and I'm not really sure why. Super Nintendo consoles routinely sell for over $100. Even a bare NES can fetch $40 or $50. So what gives? Is the Genesis really that unloved these days? This particular example is absolutely filthy and will need a full disassembly and cleaning. Let's hook it up and see if it at least works or not though. Well, I'd say that both the Genesis and the speakers work, but man is that some crunchy audio. At normal levels, everything is just dull. Turning up the volume or playing something with bass yields crazy distortion. I like the aesthetic though, so maybe transplanting some new speakers into the enclosures will be in order. Oops, I may have been too quick to assign blame. After some additional testing, it turns out that it's not the speakers causing all the crackling and distortion. It's the output from the Genesis itself that's the problem. Let's have another listen with the exact same setup, but this time using the Mega Drive. Okay, let's take a look at the Sharp YO370 Electronic Organizer. I put in some fresh batteries and it powered right up thinking it was 1995. I do like how it has soft keys for each of the functions. Calculator, schedule, important dates, to-do list, memo pad, telephone book, etc. There appears to be a computer interface on the side, but no cable was present with the device. I did finally figure out how to set the time and date, and it is Y2K compliant, so I guess I can toss my smartphone into the bin now. So, here's our haul of thrift store treasures for this episode. One new in-box PCI Ethernet card, a Panasonic floppy drive, Realistic stereo speakers of dubious quality, 512 megs of laptop RAM, 
a troubled Sega Genesis Model 1, vintage power center, recorded overcopy of Sergeant Bilko, a sharp digital organizer, and serial ID and floppy cables for 50 cents each. The new in-box Ethernet card was priced at $5, and the power center was a whopping 10. It seems that with the unstickered items, the cashier just makes up prices on the spot. These were a bit more than I wanted to pay, but seeing as it all goes to charity, why not? And here are a few late-breaking items. I did end up going back for the $1 SCSI cable, and also made a point to ask about the $25 price tag on this copy of DDR2 for the PlayStation 2. Turns out they let it go for just $5, so that came home with me as well. With these last two additions, that brings the grand total for this thrifting adventure to $53. And with that, we've reached the end. I hope you enjoyed this bit. Thank you so much for watching. Happy hunting, and see you next time.